It's a good question because during uh, October month, um, Hamas have tried to launch uh, rockets for a long uh, range to the sea for a few times. And this is the first time that, or the second time that Israel uh, tried to uh, fail it and to, uh, um, I would say, to fire these uh, uh, rockets on air. Because I think that the circumstances are, are, are a little bit different from the past, because the previous launches. Because Israel sent a message to Hamas, it's kind of a message, a symbol, if you want, that we are supervisor. We know what's going on. We know that you have rockets. We know about those experiments. And this message by launching a rocket means by Israel that we shall not uh, continue without uh, any response. Uh, and this is the, uh, the, the I would say, the uh, option of Israel to uh, try to stop it. Right. Uh, the message to Hamas is, um, in Arabic, you say the Obalak. It means um, take care. Be careful. We are knowing what's going on, be careful, and we shall not stay to the next military operation to right. uh, stop it. Well, the government has said, the new government has said it won't continue business as usual as was conducted exactly. from with uh, Hamas, and this looks like, as exactly. you said, that kind but of message. But in spite of that, Israel doesn't want to escalate. I understand. It's just a message. Let's talk about the decision for uh, that Israel gave permission for Egypt to boost its troops on the southern border, and we have to explain that is not a simple procedure because the number of those troops that Egypt can have there in Sarnia is regulated very carefully under the Camp David Accords. Of course. There is, we have to add me that there is a, I would say security coordination and cooperation between Israel and Egypt May, maybe part of that was under the uh, understandings between uh, the Prime Minister Bennett and uh, minister uh, the, the, the uh, uh, Sisi uh, president the Egypt, Egyptian uh, sorry president and I think that this um, I would say uh, kind of uh, consideration and uh, talks between Israel and Egypt, it goes on without any breaks, in spite the tension in the uh, Gaza Strip, in spite everything. And this is a specially military operation or military consideration and security con consideration that should be continued um, for example, on those cases. Right, and we've seen that deepening uh, in recent months between Israel and Egypt, for, uh, for sure. Alon, I want to ask you to stay with us. We're going to look at a uh, different type of story that came out of uh, the Gaza Strip uh, this week. A Palestinian man from Gaza has drowned, and two others are missing after a boat carrying migrants from their capsized between Turkey and Greece. Now, thousands of Palestinians have fled the blockaded Strip in recent years as poverty and unemployment have run rampant. Now, the death of the latest to try and reach a better life abroad has sparked a flurry of rage online, unleashing a fresh round of frustration, but with Hamas. Our Mary McAuliffe has that story. Bidna Naish, we want to live. It's the name and rallying cry of an independent youth protest movement that first sprung up in the Gaza Strip back in 2019. Protests throughout the Gaza Strip that unveiled cracks in Hamas's iron-fisted rule. The Hamas response to the protest was often harsh, with mass arrests, beatings, and the detention of journalists. Under a crippling blockade imposed by Israel and Egypt after Hamas came to power in 2007, Gaza is suffering from a dire economic situation and increasingly unlivable conditions. With unemployment rates among youth around 60 to 70 percent, many in Gaza flee the coastal enclave in search of a better life and more opportunity abroad. Many do so, knowing it may cost them their lives. This week, 20 migrants drowned somewhere in between Turkey and Greece. The Palestinian Foreign Ministry said 11 Palestinians were on board the ship, eight of whom were rescued, but three were reported missing. The confirmed death of Nasrallah al-Farah sparked a flurry of rage online, with commenters using the hashtag we want to live to voice their anger with conditions in Gaza and the Hamas leadership. <laughs> I'm 
Back in August, Israel approved a series of measures to ease its blockade, including opening the main commercial crossing with Gaza to imports, as well as expanding the number of permits to work in Israel to 10,000 a day, in an effort to relieve some of the pressure. But for many, those gestures were still not enough. Desperate to live, online, Palestinians in Gaza are rallying behind the cry. And alone, what's interesting here is that public anger in Gaza, certainly to some degree orchestrated by Hamas in the past, was focused outward at Israel and Egypt for its measures uh, along the borders of the Gaza Strip. Here, it seems the d direction is focused on Hamas. Exactly. In uh, this case, we are sorry about that, but this case indicates the trend, indicates the phenomena. Dozens of Palestinians from Gaza want to, to make immigration. Go to, they want to, make, uh, to go outside from Gaza, and they cannot. They cannot for some reasons. First, we have to, to remember that we are speaking about a dictatorship regime second, that closed the borders. If you want to go out, you have to bring money you know, with right. you to give this officer and the second officer to Hamas officers on the border and so on. Right. And second, People don't have enough money for that. Not sources. You have, you know, to uh, uh, organize a net that will uh, uh, get you uh, on the second uh, side and so on. So um, I would say shortly that this case uh, indicates us the main trend that a lot of people from Gaza want to run away, just to run away and to save their, themselves and their families. This is the point. And nobody can save them. Right. And we should note that there are uh, Gazans who uh, leave through the uh, Rafia crossing into Egypt. But as you said, there are difficult conditions both placed on Egypt and by course, the Hamas course. leadership. You have to consider everything during your way. All right. Alon Aviatar, thank you for joining thank us you. on The Rundown.